live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome back everyone. We are here live at Boomi World 2019. This is theCUBE's coverage here for two days. I'm John Furrier, your host with Lisa Martin, who stepped away, she'll be back. Les Retchen, President and CEO of Solace, is back on theCUBE. CUBE alumni was with us in 2013. Les, welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. You know, we're our 10th year of theCUBE, so it's 10 years we've been in business. You were early on with us, thanks for coming back. Thank you for having me. So you're an entrepreneur, you're on board, you're doing some investing. You've seen many waves of innovation. Yeah. We are in one now that's really got a lot of waves coming together, the convergence of multiple things happening. You're in the middle of it as the CEO. What's going on? What's your view of what's happening in the marketplace and what are you doing? Oh, I think I, I agree. This is early days. You know, we've got this, everything is transforming. Customers are reimagining their businesses to be innovators, to move the world forward. And along with that, to enable it, we're dealing with a whole new IT infrastructure. Hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, distributed microservices, IOT, real time. It's, so it's, it's early days of that. And so we're in the business of helping those innovators move the world forward with smart data movement, so we're very excited about it. I want to get into your, your company that you're leading now and some other endeavors you're on to, but I want to get your take on how you see um, the market and how you talk to customers and friends and people in the industry. What's the biggest story going on in your mind right now? What's the top line, high order bit, uh, trend or element or enabler, disruptive enabler, that's really power in the industry right now, that's changing it for the better and creating opportunities. What's the big story in your mind? Well, time and data are the, are the currency. And I think, you know, when you think about dealing with customers, you're listening to them, you're personalizing, you're engaging, and this is all about what I would call the event-driven customer journey experience. Business is a series of events. You want to get those events moving and flowing, and really when you think about it, that's, that can be competitively advantage for your business. You know, it's interesting, we had uh, the folks on from Boomi here, I use the, the, the bloodstream as an example, but data movement is how the business works, and we're, we live in a digital world, and it's, it's combining, it's not mutually exclusive with the analog world. And you, you have now the, the coming together of a digitized, society where things are instrumentable. You can actually get the data. Right. And then you got to know what to look for. So now the challenges with data become a big, this is a big hard problem people are trying to crack the code on. Is there a formula in your mind to, to be truly data driven or data enabled or data fed or leveraging the data? What's the, what, do you see a playbook that companies can adopt to do that? Yeah, I think that companies are sitting on top of a lot of data. The key is to liberate it, to get it moving both within your enterprise and then out to your partners in the customer world. So I think that you, know, you really want to just take advantage of it. You want to move it to where it needs to be. You want to augment the intelligence of the people within the enterprise and your customer set. So I talk about an event mesh, we call it. An event mesh enables the intelligent enterprise to deliver value. It's a nice, nice uh, concept, it's like connective tissue. Yes. Between, it's, or glue layers is, yeah. is a tech term. People Digital kick around. river, ner central nervous system, whatever you want to call Great it. Great stuff. Talk about the market you're going after, Saul. What's the, what, what, what's the market you're targeting? What's the size of it? What are you going after? What's the territory you guys are trying to uh, take down? So traditionally, we came out of what used to be called messaging-oriented middleware, right? So we're a messaging system. Now, the term would be we're an advanced event broker, this thing used to be you know, a couple billion dollar market. Now when you think about this hybrid multi-cloud IOT, this thing has probably exploded by a factor of 10 or more. Yeah, it's so interesting. It, RPA it seems to be taking hot, hot valuations these days. Yeah. Is, that, is that the same kind of thing, RPA and automation? They no, seem uh, like you I like. I think RPA would, we were, when you think about hybrid integration, you've got API management, you've got what Boomi does, the iPaaS, we're the advanced event broker. So we're talking about you know, moving these events around. It could be request reply, it could be pub sub, async, synchronous, all these different patterns for all these different use cases that are out there. 
but that's really what we do as, as opposed to RPA. Got it. What's your business model? What's the business look like? How big is the company? Uh, is it a cloud service? How do you make money? What's some of the, the, the details there? Well, we're, we're a private company. We're growing you know, very rapidly. Um, we're, we're about 300 people. It's a global enterprise. We're doing great things all over the world. You know, we're enabling Digital India, for example, with companies like Airtel and Reliance. So instead of taking 30 minutes to do a mobile phone recharge, we do it in seconds. In Singapore, we're working with land, smart transportation, land transport, next generation payments, 1.4 million connected cars and buses, getting that data flowing to optimize traffic is another example. Safety critical data in and out of the airplane, which is you know, a huge amount of events. Equities transactions, we process 85% of the equities transactions in Canada, and the list goes on. We came out of capital markets, now we're into these other industries because everything's moving to this real-time, real-time sensitive uh, type environment. And the intelligence is software, and is that the business model? You make money selling software? Is it, um, what is the Yeah, we've the got, that's a, that's a great question. We've got multiple deployment models. We've got a hardware appliance, we've got software, we've got cloud. We offer subscriptions or operating expense or capital expense. This thing is a platform, so you've got the broker itself, you've got integration connectors, you've got governance layers on top, yeah. monitoring capabilities, so it's a solution set but it's a, you know, we, we, we're very flexible and adaptable to the customer's business model in terms of subscriptions or capex, whatever you want. So you keep it flexible. It's very flexible. Because if you're running an IOT, running traffic lights, for instance, or doing yep. some sort of smart cities thing, yep. then it's got to go over into another kind of use case. They're different. Yes, we talk about being dynamic, open, and simple. Dynamic in terms of the agility of multiple different types of use cases with one solution, open meaning running everywhere, and simple meaning easy to deploy and manage. Yeah, machine learning and data, this is going to be a nice substrate layer to innovate on, so awesome business model. Let's talk about the technology and the secret sauce. Um, what's going on there? Explain the magic. What's going on with the tech product? Yeah, the solution. secret, this is all we do. Smart data movement is all we do and we're the only company out there that's really... What's smart data movement mean? Define that term. Smart data movement would be, I've got to get something from point A to point B. I want it to get there in a guaranteed, persistent way. I, you know, that, that's kind of what we do, as opposed to taking that payload and transforming it. So we're just moving the data around. We're making sure that it's, it gets there, that you can recover it, uh, et cetera. So that's, that's kind of what we do. You know, apps come and go, we heard this on theCUBE this morning, apps come and go, um, things come and go, but data always remains. Absolutely. And so this has been a theme. What's different with you guys in terms of differentiation? Because I've seen service brokers, they've come and gone. Right. Service brokers are everywhere, it's a key part of an, a system architecture. Right. You're dealing with solutions that have to think like a system. Yeah. And systems have consequences, you can't just, you got to think holistically. So right. what is your differentiation? What's the role of the broker? Just take us through that value proposition, what's the differentiator? Yeah, I think the, the differentiation here is we're, we're a platform. Um, the dynamism and the agility is, is definitely unique in that we can do WAN optimization really well. We can deal with different use case patterns. So the dynamism and the agility, we can do ultra low latency, we can do high volume, we can do general purpose across the same platform. The other point of differentiation would be openness. So we're open protocol, we support whether it's AMQP, whether it's MQTT, we're an open system and we support openness across all the hyperscaler platforms, across the PASs, so dynamic, open, and then simple in terms of it being a single solution set be it hardware, be it software, be it cloud, and successful. Our customers are very successful. The use cases that we support are uh, compelling. We help innovators move the world forward, so I'd say it's dynamic, open, simple, and successful. Who's the target audience? Developers, C-suite, because you need a code, you got to code this stuff. Right. Those are two primary target audiences. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really, it's both. It's business-driven, IT-enabled, so we tend to work with the architects, the CIOs, the middleware teams on one hand to support this reinvention of your business. 
On the other hand, when you think about transforming the business and doing something different and innovating, it's got to be business driven. So here we are at Boomi World, the theme is accelerated outcomes, which is key. So it's, it's really driving an outcome, but IT enabled, so you got to support both sides. All right, you got a large growing market, you got a good business model, you got some secret sauce. Now final segment, talk. customers. Customers and societal benefits, because look, there's a tech for good angle in here, but also there's a big wave of tech for bad stuff. So all I hear in the news is tech's evil, this is bad stuff, oh my God. So you got real customers, Where's the benefits? Take, take us through some of the success stories and the opportunities for uh, a tech for good kind of component here. Because you know, I can see the benefits, it's not on the infrastructure side, deploying new capabilities, compelling, but benefits to society are super important too. Yeah, I would say just one example would be Digital India as an example where you're saying you've got hundreds of millions of people who really need to access different capabilities, different services with smartphones. You need to deal with huge volumes. Let's give them that access, let's make it quick. So enabling Digital India is one example of really doing something that helps. You know, helps people live better, reduces their time doing things that they maybe would have taken a long time before. Another example would be Singapore, smart cities. You know, if you can move the traffic flows around better, you've got a population that's increased by a million yeah. people in the last several years. That's another example. Or Less. making payments faster, whatever the case may be. So I know you got a hard stop. You don't meet the CEO of Boomi, Chris McNabb, great guy. I had him on the Cube yesterday, Cube alumni as well. Uh, final question for you is, is there any requirements that need to be in place to work with you guys? Because obviously it's a huge task. Are there dependencies? Are there certain signs that customers need you? When, when does someone know to deploy? Obviously if someone says, hey, I want to modernize my X, what's the, uh, what's the sign, tell sign for you guys to know where there's alignment with a project or customer? Yeah, I would say that you know, it's, uh, it's a real-time sensitivity. Ideally, it's one where I want scalability, it's one where I want security, I want to be able to get the data to where it needs to be in a guaranteed way, and um, at the same time, I want to have, I want to do it in an affordable way. I want to have one platform for different use cases, so that's kind of what I would say around that. Les, thanks for taking the time to come on, share your insights in real time here on theCUBE. One final, final question, because I love to get the final, final question. You've seen a lot of waves, you've been a lot of experiences, you've run companies, you're on a lot of boards, a lot of young people coming into the marketplace. I sometimes go on my rant, get off my lawn, you know, you kids don't know how good you had it. It's a great time to be young, and this, the reskilling going on is an all-time high. What's your advice to the young, upwardly mobile tech soon to be tech, totally tech savvy, future employees of the world because there's a lot of hard projects to tackle. Yeah. Tons of jobs, cybersecurity, what you're doing. Do they know how good they have it? And what's the advice that you would give people watching here knowing how robust this environment is? Oh, I think it's a, it's a great environment and you're right. I think this, it's all about people matter most and winning with talent. So the talent supply chain is a big issue. And one is, you know, Every day is a learning day. Make it a learn it all, you know, keep, keep learning every day because this business is moving you know, very quickly. At the same time, being a good team member, I would say being compassionate, being empathetic to your teammates and really using that to your advantage is, is huge, right? It's one thing to have the domain skills, but it's also another thing to have those human skills that really make a difference. It's a team sport, it takes a village these days. Tech is coming, Les, thanks for coming on. It's theCUBE coverage here in DC. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching, be right back. Thanks.